Today we're going to show you how to remove and replace a carburetor on a 150. We're using a Trailmaster cart today and it's actually in our shop for real repairs and getting a carburetor replaced. The first thing Scott's going to do is remove the air box by removing this bolt, this bolt, there's a clamp on here and there's a clamp here that he's going to remove. Now that the air filter is removed, Scott's going to remove the electrical box cover by removing these two screws here. Some carts that just threaded into the bottom, some have a nut underneath that you'll have to hold as well. And he's going to undo the choke is what he's after. So wires, you follow these wires from the choke into the box and you're going to unplug them. Now we're going to come around to this side of the carburetor with the 12 millimeter wrench we're going to remove the jam nut on the throttle cable and release it from the cam on the carburetor. pull it up out of the way then we're going to come back over across and we're going to release the vacuum lines right here at your Y you can remove your vacuum line and leave it cooked to your intake manifold which we're going to check as well while we're doing a carburetor we have a, a Phillips head screw here that we're going to remove on the front intake manifold and then Scott will be pulling the carburetor out of the unit. We're going to remove the fuel line at this point. Cut your pick, cut your pick. and slide the carburetor out of the unit. And that's how you're going to remove a carburetor from the 150. Now, anytime that we remove a carburetor in our shop, we remove the intake manifold by removing the two 10 mil nuts here. And we'll slide this up and we'll show you what we're looking for as far as cracks or damage to the manifold. Now we're going to come around here where we can show you what we're actually looking at. Scott's pulling the clamp and he's going to show you the edges where he's looking to make sure there's no cracks. These manifolds like to crack on that edge and cause a vacuum leak. Now he's going to look up inside where he's checking for cracks. They will run along the inside edge that actually run up a bolt hole, bolt hole. and then we're going to check our o-ring on it to be sure the o-ring is still in good shape. As long as everything's good, it appears this one is, we're going to check the inside where the o-ring rides. It's a phenolic block in there, and we're just going to feel inside, make sure it's flat, then we're going to reinstall it. Scott says we're good, so we're going to put it back on.
when we're reinstalling we always use a hand tool so that we can evenly pull down the nuts and get an even torque on them. There are no torque specs for this. We just snug them up evenly and fairly good snug on them. Now Scott has a new carburetor that he's going to slip back in and just reversing what we did. He's going to slide the carburetor in then he's going to put his front clamp on, hook his choke up, and reconnect vacuum and fuel lines. Can you get that button? It's easier to flip the fuel line back on with the carburetor still out of the intake manifold, as you see Scott doing there. He's already pushed his choke wires over to this side. And he's going to work the carburetor back into position to slide it back in the intake manifold. Now he's going to hook your throttle line back up. We're going to show you the correct or what we do for the throttle cable adjustment. This slack that you're going to want this carburetor to not over pull and break cables. On setting your throttle cable, what we're looking for is we want a hair bit of slack left in it so it properly opens all the way and also you're checking to make sure it's not too tight where it's pulling the throttle open and you're not going to be able to set your idle. We're going to tighten up the Phillips head screw at this point holding the carburetor into the intake manifold. Now Scott's going to come back and hook his vacuum lines up and he's going to hook up the choke which he'll show you how to run back through and plug back in. Prior to reinstalling the air filter, we're going to remove the screws. There's six screws around the air filter housing, and we're going to check that air, air filter out, and then we're going to show you another hole to check on your intake tube.
Now your air filter is completely soaked. Where this was, the petcock originally was bad and allowing fuel to run back through the system. And the carburetor was plugged up, allowing it to run back out the back of the carburetor into the air filter. The next thing we're gonna check on this air filter housing is for the EGR inlet. And we want to make sure there's no cracks around it, so when we plug it back in, we're not sucking dirt in, which we do have a crack. And on this system, we choose to replace the entire assembly. We do not silicon this. You can silicon it if you choose to do so. But we're going to replace this with a brand new unit instead of repairing this one. Now we're reinstalling the new air filter and we're going to slide it down underneath. We're going to aim up at the carburetor with the inlet neck. And before we get there, it's easier to actually put the vacuum line, the vent line to the valve cover back into the air breather box, as well as our EGR inlet to our air breather box. Scott's checking the security of that, it's good. And he's going to install the, right down here, the other vacuum line. Now we're going to slide it up over the carburetor neck, right here. And tighten up our clamp on that. Alright, then Scott's going to reinstall his bolt here and his bolt here and then we're going to slide the tube, the Ventura tube, back on. And your air filter's back on. We're ready to try to start this card up. Now we're going to reinstall the electrical box cover now that we've ran our engine and made sure everything's working, our wiring's not getting hot. Scott's retucked the wiring and re-zip tied it up where it's not going to get under the box and get sorted out, as well as checked all of us units here to make sure they're going to clear the box. We have a hole here that we have to clear and one right up here that we're going to clear and Scott's going to show you how to put that box back on. Now we're ready to go out and test drive this card. Okay, now that we're ready to start this engine up, Scott on a new carburetor normally presets it. He'll screw it into where it has a little bit higher idle that will bump back down once it's warming up. We'll show you that in a minute. We're going to go ahead and start it up. We're going to let this engine warm up for five roughly minutes that allows the choke to completely go off. Then we're going to show you how to set your idle mixture screw. Normally the setting on this is going to run you from screwing it all the way in new. You're going to turn it out about one and three quarter rounds. And now what we're doing is we're listening. Once we've got it warmed up, we're listening to the engine smooth out, pick up RPM and drop back off. Then we're going to dial back in or out, whichever way we need to go to get that smoothest back. That's what you're looking for on your idle mixture screen. We'll rev it up. 
then we'll shut it back down and take it out for a test drive.